Okay, so somebody's asking a question about the big sell-off in the euro dollar. Is it escaped this triangle? And we can do a bunch of analysis to uh, see that window of opportunity that was, oh, maybe three months in the making for a two-day sell-off in the... Uh, so here's the question. The sexy Mrs. G, I don't know if that's a girl maybe. Um, so... Can you explain how to survive the June? Actually, it started, and then there was two giant power sell-off days. Now, you could just not trade that day, and this is the obvious kind of uh, sad answer, is that if you do trade every day and you're making money every day, well, that day you lose money. And I'm not sure how much money you lost where it became a problem. And if you were doing it on a demo, then you just kind of lose your mind. You don't lose any money. You just kind of feel bad about, oh, gosh, she look, I'm <laughs> clobbered on this thing. Uh, some kind of trader you are. And, uh, yeah, these things are not never good. I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing, um, I'm losing money like that on the uh, one hour chart, right? Uh, I put a buy, uh, stack in there i put a pancake order i put my uh deep state uh icebergs in there and next thing you know they just rifle through it right now if i have tight stops then i'm going to lose a little bit of money and then i'm thinking yeah but i've seen these retracements so gosh i i need a wider stop okay that uh, the only thing you're going to save is you're going to save the spread and repaying the commissions and the spread over again so if what is the ratio of cost of I'll buy a 1k with a 100 pip stop and then I'll buy a um, 1k with a 10 pip stop now if you put a stack of 1ks with 10 pip stops and you can see by that day we can go to the chart this, this is the punishment how fast the market drops and it's dropping very fast oh, I like this guy here like we really need to see it. your tattoo made your money okay uh, do my typical forex search here but so this is the this is the the question is about this one move here now these moves happen and these are the moves that you know if somebody's writing that down right you have a different mindset now if you're buying on limits you're and you're a swing trader and that's uh, i think a 10 pip grid here I think that's a that could be let me let me just double check i think it's 10. so this is the other thing is really i don't know how big you're in this trade and that's going to cause the psychological pain is the size of the trade that's 20 pip grid so i thought yeah that's kind of looks kind of big so that's 20 pips now just try to imagine uh and this is the trade i did and i can show you on the demo account the what it looks like to trade that and i traded halfway through that and i lost on real money on that a little bit too is that i bought that plunge by the way so this is the june if you see the date here now actually that's must have lost on something else that day but this is a typical kind of because uh, this is not okay this is june 16th so i bought that plunge yeah that that yeah i got everybody got crushed anybody got crushed that trades the same stop okay okay why did you get crushed well, I don't trade with the 80 pip stops in every ticket because I'm typically scalping and I'm making money in four hours. And if you look at my eight hours, so if you look at my uh, uh, stats, how long my length of my trade is 8.6 hours. Now, I'm not a person that's going to hold that. And don't forget, the guy that went short, think about the guy. A lot of people lost a lot of people lose money every day in all sorts of ways it's the amount they're losing so yeah you, if you're gonna say that you got in front of that train and um, wow yeah but the, as it comes in that vacuum so you have to change your personality I guess you have to be multi flexible if you stand rigid with a 10 pip stop if your whole life is a 25 pip stop there's certain trades that would be unavailable i can't imagine trading the british pound in a swing mode with a 25 pip stop you need a 300 pip stop if you're looking to capture the 
order and balance it goes through a six day cycle. It's down three days, it retraces three days. I'm in the market for 8.6 hours. I mean, and, and I'm actually, that's the average. I mean, some of these trades, you know, they used to not allow you to scalp. The broker would be like, well, you only that trade for, I remember this one broker um, somewhere on Cyprus, and they said to me, you got to be in the tr trade for at least two minutes. Or they had like a kind of a, um, a governmental, uh, oh, just a short time. Bullshit. Like, you're going to save 16 cents on your hot dog? Um, is that per, the hot dog, right? Because they say on your meal, but, well, how much is the fucking meal? Where are you eating at that 16 cents is going to matter, right? You, you spent that just saying hello. Um, so the, uh, you know, this... Just round. You still, you're still printing pennies, though. We're still printing pennies because they're, they're, they're kind of, uh, you know, quaint. It's a cent. Uh, and the, and they, so the, so this, when I built this, when I started this account here at five grand, right? Now I had this big run, a nice, I don't know, this boom. I made money out of the gate here. I don't know, seven grand. Or maybe it started at ten grand. I don't. I don't know. But anyways, um, I'm not sure if this start. I think it started at five grand. So I don't know why the re I don't know why this bumps up here like this. But I guess this day here was like holy shit. I'm down. I'm a. I'm at eleven now. If this real. If this was real money. Okay, you're at eleven forty six, and then you're like, dude, we just lost fucking a thousand dollars today. Like what the fuck? You, you just lost fucking fourteen hundred. Now if you're if you started with five grand i mean you're like oh, jesus christ man that was fucking i thought you want to go straight up you never want to fucking draw down <laughs> of course but uh if i'm gonna say i got these i'm also trading two currencies now it's not i love it and i hate it because well the, the part i love about it is that um i can there the dollar and the yen and the euro to the dollar are both in about the same pip kind of drama. They typically don't go, they're not trading like the pound. The pound, you need to double your stops. You, you actually doubled your size. So a lot of people say, well, I'm going to go trade 1% of my account, 2% of my account. As soon as you go to the pound, you can't even think like that. If you're going to swing trade it, how are you doing that? The market's moving fucking 300 pips when the euro's moving 100 and the yen's moving 100, the pound's moving 300 pips. So how are you, explain that to me again. Uh, and the spread's wider there to tell you that this thing can fucking move. I mean, uh, the, now the Australian dollar's barely moving, but it'll move. So it's barely moving, barely moving, and I don't know what, you know, on that one day, are you babysitting this fucker every day waiting for some big giant move? So I'm sure everybody that watches my channel or whatever or what, thinks about trading is trying to make money. And we're trying to get rich quick because they, the, 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 the world will tell you you can't get rich quick. But you can get, if you can get poor quick, why can't you get rich quick? Yeah, you can get rich quick. Now, psychologically, it's, it's uh, overwhelming. It's like a guy that's an overnight star, rock star. He's going to be a fucking, if, if people have drugs around him, he's going to be a drug addict because he can't handle the instant, it's not natural. The tree that's out in my yard, you know, I kind of trimmed it down, I'm rehabbing it, and I thought, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to fucking take this thing, it's taking this thing five years to get back to, um, I guess, smiling. Um, it's fucking not. But in the market, holy fuck, boom. And, you know, it's just, it's just wicked fast. I don't know if you watch the NFP, the spreads, I'm watching um, just the spreads widen into the news. Boom. And then it just explodes and we could, we all could have made money there. A lot of people can't trade the news. I trade it, you know, I mean, but it's just like a regular trade. Sometimes I make money. Sometimes I don't. I always, I'm always getting better at trading every day though so yeah there's nothing that's going to make you feel okay to lose but you realize that you don't have to be in the market see it's you're the one that chose to uh go to the protest and get your ass beat 
I, I'm always amazed that people expect security when they leave their house. That kills me. I'm cracking up. Like, you, you really went to a fucking protest and you got your ass kicked? No. You're kidding. Oh, really? So, please, you know, when they come to my house, yeah, I'm blowing your fucking head off. Everybody's <laughs> blowing your fucking head off. You know, it's like, come on, dude. But it, it, it pays the rent. It's an industry now. You know, we're very, everybody's so rich. They're fucking woke. They got time to fucking <laughs> contemplate their navel. So the scripts is the savior. In my opinion, there's nothing more disciplined than a pending order because you're saying that's my fucking trade plan. There it is. The other thing. When the market's plunging like a fucking whore, if your tickets only last four hours and you can front run them out in front of the market, you barely get tagged. Now, I did, I bought the dollar, if anybody traded the dollar yen on Friday, it plunged one last pullback and completed the whole fucking retracement down back into reality. And it just dropped 30 pips in fucking one, two hours. And I bought that plunge. And I had the same situation. I'm buying into it, and I'm like, God, fuck, really? Okay, it was annoying because I'm like, okay, you know, I, I, I bought a little bit of the market. Now, here's why you just don't want to trade at the market. And when you trade at the market, you think you know what's going on. Now, if you bought into that while it's plunging at the market, that's a completely different psychology than laying limits out and front-running the market with giant fucking crazy-ass fat fucking tickets at the bottom, 120 pips deep. When you see the market dropping at that rate, if you look left... On the dailies, if you have any perspective of why is it plunging like a fucking horror, it's because of the vacuum. Yeah, it's filling, in my opinion, it's just, holy shit, you know, these are uh, just like the, okay, I watched the S&P 500. I watched it climax, don't forget, it's July 1st. There's only six months left in the year, dude, and it's like fucking, the wheels are coming off. You got the S&P 500 making record highs, and I'm watching it gap on the five while I'm in this yen trade. So I'm kind of, I'm not doing it. There's not complete correlations, but the dollar obviously kicked the ass of everything on the planet. Um, you know, they came out with that news of the Fed was, uh, oh, we're going to read that. You know, the, the cat already left the bag. Look at the dollar yen fucking two months ago. Dude, the cat left the bag a long fucking time ago on the dollar yen. Now, we just made record highs in the dollar yen. Making record. When you, I, I sell into that fuck. I, so I sold in that yen. I... I would be selling the S&P 500 if I was an S&P. I would be already be short right now. I'm long the dollar yen into the weekend a little bit. And if you're going to trade every day, and obviously you traded this day, if you trade every day, anything could happen. Uh, that's why I'm only trading two currencies because I got the dollar. If I, I got pendings in both waiting on Sunday night to get filled on either leg. I got buy limits on the year. If the market's peaking, I got buy limits below. If the market's tanking, I got, I'm sorry, if the market's peaking, I got buy limits below to catch it. When it comes back, I also got sell limits above. So I'm playing both sides towards the middle. That's four trades that could possibly be going on on two currencies. Actually, now six, if you think in terms of, Alexander Elder is saying that there are there's three trades uh, per currency. Uh, first trade being no trade. So not having a position is a position, right? You, you don't have to fucking trade every day. Now, I do, and that's why I have the demo. And what I do on the demo is somewhat correlated to my real money in the sense that if I see an opportunity and I built a giant uh, long position in the yen as it's going sideways... I'm presupposing we're going to continue to the next last last known vacuum. Look left, there's a vacuum, leaves clues. And I'm like, okay, we're going to go, we're going to cut new water. That dollar yen, and I went along the dollar yen, is went screaming up and just nicked the top. And then it paused in Asia and kept ripping another fucking measured move of almost the same amount, then ripped all the way back. I don't know if anybody saw the dollar yen. But just look back at the three last three fucking days. Now, that kind of drama... That is once in a in a lifetime and moment in that price, and you'll never see that order block or whatever the fuck again because that hat that's cleared out that zone. Now we could keep going higher, but it's going to be consolidation, little little dick around twenty pip, ten pip, twenty pip, ten pip. Now if you can make money in a ten twenty pip window, 
and then the market rips 50 pips now i moved my when i see the market ripping and i so if i play the range traders game i buy sell that's what i do buy sell buy sell and then i see oh we're gonna rip up i'm like uh oh we are really and this is become watching one currency i can have a sense of what's uh, the long picture as i see us humming and hawing and this is accumulation distribution 80 percent of the market's doing that in that one fucking day the thing distributes i mean it marks it down you're buying that plunge you happen to be buying this plunge and yeah psychologically now if you just now after a big move when i have a big win i just i'll be like okay i'm just not gonna i put a light trade on so i go from light to heavy uh, I'm not going to put another, there's not going to be a heavy trade coming up. So when the market's coming in the next week here, the NFP is out. All that bullshit news is out that kind of spikes the market and establishes, uh, destroys the vacuums. Now we're sitting in a, a doji we're coming into sunny, you know, we all okay. Now we might spill down a little lower. And so since I've, been selling more than i like I, I never used to sell because i figured my taking profits on my buys is a sell now it is a little bit diff difficult because if you're used to making x on which pattern you see so if you've been trading a long time you look at the market you go i know what i can make on this thing in this demo account by the way every fucking trade on here is a 1k there is not no ticket that is bigger than a 1k and there's times that i thought oh fuck i'm just gonna buy a 20k this is obvious I'm just going to come in. And I did that with the other one. I kind of tainted the other demo because it came in and said, oh, dude, let's fucking load the wagon here. And I just scrolled up the sizing until I got to like whatever, 33K. Boom, 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 boom. And then I scalped out. I had a, no stops, no, no targets. I had to be very conscious what's going on in that trade. It's not fucking, this is all the stops. There's not a fucking trade on here that doesn't have a stop or take profit and i did take profits before maybe the take profits were hit but in this account i think there's only been one or two times i closed all open and pending and started from fresh start now in the olden days without the scripts to clear out um all of the pendings which the point of the computer is not to build dumb shit algorithms it's to execute for me it's about execution. Can I get these tickets? Can I get my orders in and out? Like nobody gives a fuck on the moving average on your package out of Amazon. They just want to know, did it make it to the destination? It's a logistic situation. Did it make it there? Okay, bing, bing, everything's accounted for. I don't give a fuck what you're shipping. What, you got some some uh, children packed into that fucking furniture? I don't, we don't care. And I know that's what makes a great story and sells newspapers and all that, but I'm talking about like, so in the, the other trades that i've missed out on i can see oh fuck i could have laid that rack and so the so the um and i've done a few trades like that and i'm beginning to think that the ultimate is to just be able to when the market opens <laughs> when it's open because it's not open now but i could do it in the i could do it in bitcoin right now i could lay um i could write a script so I write the trade plan, which is the script, and then I and I put the orders in. Now the 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 big fucking thing is about how long do they last? If they only last for two hours, dude, you're barely trading. I mean, you you're such a low risk trader. If I put a buy limit fifty pips deep that lasts fifteen minutes, I'm gonna tell you, unless they assassinate the president or unless uh, Biden just starts vomiting on Mike. There's no fucking way. I mean, you're going to fill on that ticket. If you would have run your orders uh, 50 pips deep on the hourly, maybe you get filled on a couple of those tickets. And then, of course, the whole other side of this equation is how much work does it take to trade one case and make whatever we made here uh, night? twenty thousand dollars i mean seriously uh wow and um that means that if i made a dollar per ticket which was some of my, some of my targets are 20 30 pips and let's see how trades i did and this is a demo that i don't nobody's gonna oh yeah because you don't care you just you, yeah it's a demo 
<laughs> Dude, it's still fucking work. So you get a lot of that. But the risk of room zero at the moment. <laughs> but uh, as I'm not in a trade, I guess that's determined on what you're in. What is what is my uh, how many trades I did? Okay, so I'm looking for the how many total trades. I don't really see that. Maybe it's too big a number, so I'm not seeing it. <laughs> Anyways, I did a lot of trades in there. Uh, maybe some stats. Well, yeah. So here's the thing, you know. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna lose money. You're gonna lose win or lose money trading. So. You know, I always feel bad even if I lose 20 bucks because I'm like, you know what? I Maybe I should just have a wider st I mean, I'm just being too tight with my stops. I mean, I just put that. Another thing is you put the effort to put the order in. Who wants to get stopped out of you? I spent all that time fucking picking that thing. So if I did 50,000, 54,000 trades, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> those ones I, I win, and, win or lose. Now, you can't do 54,000 trades in 95 days without scripts. Well, maybe you could. I don't know. Am I over trading? Maybe a little bit. Now, I, I got this one, and I'll show you how I made my money back. Now I lost my money because I put 50 pip. Oh, I remember the pounds. So the pounds dropping at the same time that you're saying the uh, euro's dropping. Same problem, you know. This is the daily pound, you know, dropping like a whore right here. So this, I bought into this with a 50 pip stop. Now this is 300 pips from here to here. Uh, fuck. Where's this guy at? Okay. So we knew that if we breached this, and if it breached this, now hopefully you made enough money. This is the daily chart. And you got to trust and believe that we came down here and we went here. So we knew that we could have made money here, right? Because if we have orders, and this is a 25 pip grid on top of 100. So here to here is 25. If we put it, now you have to trade in 50 pip windows on the pound. So if you lay, instead of a 10 or 20 pip window, you're going to buy this 50 pip window. And another reason you're getting crushed is you're not taking profits when you should here. When they come into this low, there's probably a trade in here. I can't, I, I would have to tell you there's a, a scalp in here. This did not go straight down all day. Uh, this order block or this 100 pip window, you should have been able to make, okay, now here's where you lost. If this did not, we know that it made it to here after here, so we know we could have made a dead cat bounce off of that very low. But this is the time you lose money. So if you trade a static size every day, you trade the same percentage risk of your account maybe or something. I don't know how these people are doing that. But because that seems like you can only, and then if you did 1% uh, of your account, think of it this way. If you're one of those people that risk 3% of your account, risk 1% per ticket. Okay, if you got some flexibility. I mean, yeah, if you just bought into this standard lot, you're taking a 200 pip drawdown to eventually make back all the way back. And why does the market turn around there? Because somebody bought here and, you know, a lot of people are like, holy shit, when it comes back to here. Yeah, that bottom at the 100 becomes a top. This is like, oh, my God. Now, how did I make it back? because I bought here, and this is Sunday night, and I bought like crazy here. I'm sorry, this is Friday. This is Sunday. Because see how gap opened. And I'm long this thing like you cannot believe. And I'm holding that for 100 back to here. Or even 200. Now, it, you actually can make back everything you lost in that crush down, but you'd have to have the market orders available. There's no limits unless you have limits pending here. And I doubt a lot of people have the fortitude or the um, balls to step out and do the same trade that they just got clobbered in. And that's not going to happen for a lot of people. So n not many people are going to say, you know what? 
Fuck them. And this is why anger trading works. Um, okay, they just crushed me. Fuck them. I'm buying this. No, really. Fuck Dominion. Fuck Biden. Fuck the regime. I'm buying this. Especially, I would just love to fucking see... And this is another one I did to my dad because he's a stock trader. And he's, he, oh my, he wanted me to trade stocks. And I said to him, okay. He goes, do your homework. So I sent him a thing. Dude, look at the news here. Oh, the pound's going down to, yeah. Yeah, I know. Tell me all about it, brother. And it does go down. And they go, see, we were right. See, it went down. I go, dude, I just made so much fucking money on this move. And I could sell here. And this is a small bar. This is a 30 pip day. I'm sorry, this is a 75 pip day. Now, in the 75 pip day, if I go to take the British pound to the one hour chart, you think I couldn't make money on the pound with a 50 pip stop? I, I'm going to sell here with a 50 pip stop, sell here with a 50 pip stop. On the daily, I just made how many pips again? And all I'm fucking doing is selling new highs and buying new lows. Now I'm starting to get pissed. Because. If you're gonna tell me that you got this moving average strategy, <laughs> the, the warrior girl, I mean, sorry, the uh, mindful trading girl, it's just pathetic. I mean, but this is, she is the ultimate gooberette. This is a female goober. She's the ultimate gooberette because, you know, Hannah Forex, I know the women, bless their heart, they got a nice ass, but they, I mean, and they should be trading, but not with the man's tools. Right? They should be using. I don't know. Maybe they should try something different than technical analysis. Use your fucking. What women are good at is intuition. They should be intuition traders. Oh, looks like it's going up. Okay, bye. You still need the fucking execution. Okay, what what's just flying over the fucking head is no execution, no market orders available. I'm running this thing. I got I got that ticket, dude. I got a fifty pip stop to make a hundred pips. Now I wish it was hundred fifty. So I could just walk away from that trade. Now on the pound, if I was going to uh, trade the pound, I'd write scripts for the pound. Yeah, I got 150. I got a, I got 150 pips stop to make 300 pips. The ratios double your money. I seen the I seen the uh, mindful uh, girl going and doing. Oh, well, I got this break in. I'm getting here. I got my stop here. Got my entry here. And I take profit here. Okay, I got it. You know, you sold here and you made your profit and you didn't get stopped out of that 1% trade, but you cannot make a living like this. I mean, I can't imagine it, man. The market's fucking open. This is only because I spent too many years trading. I, the market's open. Let's trade it. And when I saw these scripts, I, I, I just, I, I can't believe it. I'll never forget. And they don't have them anymore. <laughs> you can't, MT4 platform doesn't come with a script. I can't believe my brokers let. I always thought my broker's not going to let me use these scripts. Because I'm like cheating. Oh, I got pendings down here. Like, I don't give a fuck. In a 50 pip window on the pound, I got pendings. I don't care. So, I have one student I think I can. I found this girl that's trading um, on her phone. Oh, I buy a little bit of stock, 50 bucks a week. I'm like, oh, God. Here, let me hook you up. So I could probably make her a Forex trader, but, you know, this is the thing. As soon as you talk about trading and money, I notice a lot of people just freak out. Was this like a scam or something? Yeah, no, your brain's scamming you. In fact, I still, still, okay, how you know there's goobers that are still out there keeping it real? People are wearing fucking masks. And these people are wagging their finger. You don't get it vaccinated. Vaccinated? Like Christ, it's Alice's restaurant. Have you been Alice's restaurant? I mean, what what the fuck's going on, man? Look at this pound. So you can only guess what my trade was here. Buy below here. Buy below the Williams fractal. Well, wait a minute. But it went down fifty. I know. I know. I know. In fact, buy new lows here. Buy new lows. Nice trade. That's day trading. In my opinion, that's a fucking day trade. I got sell limits at new highs. What got filled? Psh, got buy limits. Look at I'm just trapping goobers all day long. Look at 
sell here, buy back here. That's 50 pips. You can make 50 pips a day trading every day on this, but maybe 100 pips. 80% of the market's doing this shit. And then you saw, what do you do about this sell-off? Well, you could just start putting limits really deep. Now, you're saying you put them in wide. I don't think you put them in wide enough. And the other thing is that if you buy in the 25s, you buy a 1K, a 2K, a 3K, a 4K, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You should be in a 10K down here. But if you're watching it happen, you're shitting your pants. I, I could get this girl to do it. I'd say, honey, we're going to put in, and I give her the scripts. We're going to trade with 100 pip stops. $10 risk per ticket to make 10 or 20 bucks per ticket. Now she can make 30 bucks. If I if I say, okay, she draws 10, she buys here, she loses 10. Buy here, lose 10. 150 pips stop she needs. She's got to risk 15. She blows out the 15. She risks 15. And she may not even make 30. This is another big fallacy is you're going to have a ratio. I got good ratios. That's not going to work. I ain't, uh, I'm gonna, it's not going to work, dude. Uh, sorry, not for, me, not for me, not for anybody that trades fucking every day. Because you have an end of the world stop. And if you trade without stops, that's what people do. That's how you flip an account. You get, oh, I could have I could have taken this account to fifty grand if I babysat it without stops. I'd be all shit. I can make a hundred grand. Dude, I can make a hundred grand in one day. Sit there and go, Yep, we've waited twenty five days. I counted and this you can see how stupid. Hopefully. <laughs> if you see a video where people are talking about um oh I count back five bars. <laughs> It's ridiculous. It doesn't, these bars don't mean the count of these bars back after this move. I count five bars back. I put a stop on there. Oh, Christ. You're being like a robot. Why are people using robotic methods? This is why the girls should really tap into. They're using technical analysis. I guess you could say I'm using price analysis. I'm just looking at where can we go? And that should be like really what they're good at. Now, the um of course there's a lesbians right so there's girls that are like guys but i'm saying for the girly girls well they're probably not even trading but it's funny because if somebody's good looking and oh you want you oh yeah you know what i got a channel and i'm making money great okay but are you helping people trade are you helping people execute the trade probably not like I don't see. I just went through another little view of forex. I don't see anybody with even a ticket on the screen. They're on Trading View talking about fantasy trades and oh here and there and boom. Yeah, but you gotta fucking be like, okay, how are we gonna do that trade? Now what's the trade for me here? Coming into Sunday, if I was trading the pound with twenty five, fifty pip stops, I'm looking to make twenty five fifty in the scripts. I just was. Uh, Thinking about how I'm going to make my odd stops and odd targets will be uh, scalps. So I'm going to write um, scalps that have odd, you know, 9, 7, 11, 13. So when I look at it visually, I just know because I got so many scripts. When I look at it, I go, oh, that's a scalp, you know, or that's going to be uh, short term trade. It's hard because I, I wrote. Uh, too many scripts uh, because no, it's just like people write a bunch of songs. What's the hit song? What's your favorite script? What I would say my favorite script has to be uh, for the euro. Okay, I got a, I got a, I got a, a twenty or twenty year less pip stop to make forty pips. Yeah, I could run a whole. I could run every version of that, like nineteen, eighteen, seventeen. It's where you place the scripts too. So where you place these orders? If you're gonna put a bank in. You're risking 40 bucks. You know, if every has a unique entry, I never want to duplicate my entry. So when the market's dropping like a rock like that, some of those have bad ratios. Some of those are risking a hot, are risking 40 pips to make 20 pips. Oh, I'm going to make my 20 pips, right? And I'm going to put more tickets in like that. Now, this is totally counterintuitive. I'm going to risk, you're going to risk more? Oh, yeah. 
I guess it's the anger trait, right? I'm going to put a 40 pip stop to make 20. Fuck you. I'll make my 20. Fuck you. I should be swearing, but I, <laughs> I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie. When they stop me out, I'm like, I can't, to this day, I'm like, really? You just, like, you just cut me off in traffic. Don't you know who I am? I'm a fucking master trader. What the fuck is wrong with you? You can't see. Dude, these are ridiculous prices. When it's dropping like that, I'm like, really? And don't forget, when it's dropping like that, the Fed comes out and they say, we're going to raise interest rates. And then the whole, we, you give back that whole move. So, well, who's on this trade? Where's the smart money? I say the smart money is buying down here. I mean, smart money means you're making money. The Fed comes out, says we're raising interest rates. Um, bad, good for dollar, bad for pound. Pound gets raped 300 pips and retraces 200. Wow. Now, did the the trend traders come in here? Moving the averages like this. Oh, yeah, well, then I do this trade. Yeah, tops become bottoms. Okay, maybe you're doing that trade. Now, that would have to be at the market unless you put sell limits on the highs of the new days. So if you put a, a combo plate, and maybe you do have a sell stop here to get involved in this. Sell stops here, turtle trader, right? Now, I know that makes money, right? And when people talk about grid trading, I think they always, I always think limits, but a lot of people think, well, you got sell stops and a grid here. And as they go down, yes, that would make money. You're, you're right. That would make money. Um, if I put sell stops here and, and I just gridded that out, I better have targets in that. Because if I sell, 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 sell this last ticket is a dumb trade, dumb money, right? Because if I sell here, as we plunge, sell stop, sell stop, the sell stop, we got a problem, right? So if you martingaled into that, or pyramided into it. The first time I see somebody pyramid was Bill Williams' sell 1K, sell 2K, sell 3. And like, holy shit, this trade's really working out. You're making an amount of money. You are so short here. And it's over. You are now in the trap. I would say the uh, bear trap. Because everybody's, it's a crowded short market. Um. If you know what you're looking at here in the big picture, so to speak, then, uh, so here's the big picture. We just have to zoom out to here to see, oh, what's really going on? Okay, well, I, I see it now, yeah. Now, all this stuff I was just bitching about here, like how much money you can make up there. I took off the candles because it's just too much information. If you look at uh, situations like this, this is my favorite trade. Now, you'll see this on the news, and this probably was a news event. They come back and they clean out anybody that has a... Uh, oh, don't forget that sell stop entry idea. You got a sell grid in here to sell. Okay, you're making money, and then all of a sudden, whoa, what was that? Now, I psychologically would rather have buy limits pending in here than sell stops to get involved in a new fresh sell-off. I don't think that's a winning strategy, although if you took early profits, right, you could scalp those... And this, all this hemming and hawing, and you can say this is the uh, top become a bottom there. We rip up. This is supposed to, and this is a giant pivot, apparently. But there's still all this trading up in here where you, you could, and I just like the the fact that I don't, I know they can put buy stops here. I know, I've, I've seen that, right? Buy stops, you grid it out. But if you do not take profit, see how we come all the way back to the starting gate? That's not a, unless you cash out, you are not making money. I'd rather put the sell limits in, all because I'm a contrarian. I'm going to put sell limits in. And I'm going to sell more, 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 more. And then it comes back and I'll cash out. If I wasn't in that trade yet, my other trade is going to be this one. If we are here, and I'm not in the market, I never sold into this. 
uh, I'm either going to sell here, and if I, if I, so I'm going to put buy limits here. If I'm not short, I miss this whole thing, and this day comes, this small day, I'm not putting a sell stop in there, even though it would make me X pips. Why? Because I might as well just sell at the market um, anywhere along the way here. So this is the controversy, I suppose, is the trend traders are going to, the confirmation traders put a sell stop here. They get involved in this down move. They're like, I'm up 50, I'm up, I made 80 pips. Great. If you ran a trailing money management stop on the daily here, you see how feeble some of this stuff can be. You put a sell stop here, you're short, you're up 50 pips, so you take your um, stop, you cancel, replace, you move your stop to here, you're short, and you move your stop to here. Now, the market comes back and stops you out. You made 25 pips when you were up 50. All right, so you missed out on that. And if you, um, I'm sorry, yeah, you get stopped out here. No, you were up, You, if you got out here, you were up 80. But if you waited for them to stop you out on the trailing coming back, you made 25 years. Oh, I'm not going to lose no money on that. It's breaking. Yeah, you're just being super lazy at that point, especially as a daily. So you can see how I would be short here on the scalp. I would have scalped about uh, 10 pips on the close there. Here you got to take um, 50 pips of punishment to make your. Here I got buy limits all the way down. I'm going to make my money comes from this move up to here. Cash out. Now I got buy limits. Buy limits, buy limits, and then buy a ton more here. And that's why this is going to make money for these that lost. And almost back to, I'm going to, if I close all open and pendings, everything that I bought and where am I going to buy the most is, is going to be right here. So I can see this buy window. And that actually made money because I bought there. And at some point, we actually made it back to the floor. So within there, I can just tell the daily that I made my trade plan. I don't need a five-minute chart. Don't need a, a, a four-hour chart. Now, the four-hour chart, you're going to see that I made my money. Why I made my money in four to eight hours, typically, because I went. That's the trade. This trade here, probably maybe uh, twelve hours. I'm actually, I'm actually just right up on the market. I got buy limits in here. I'm buying that on limits in a fifty pip window. I mean, it's just that simple. It's just too simple. It's too. Simple. Here's a uh, seventy five pip sell window. And um, yeah. Certainly buying in here, buying here is, wow. This is that big wedge of support that gives you that beautiful, um, crushing, high probability retracement. Like when they crush this zone here, wow, you make it all the way back to the floor. Also, I am scalping just that initial if I buy a 50 pip window, I'm cashing out of something as we just come back to here and confirm it. And then it can, it's, then it's got to follow through. It starts to engulf. So if I buy this area, scalp to the bottom of where I started buying. And some of these, this is where all this, the uh, script placement, organizing, how many are going to be scalps, how many are going to be. 100 pip winners and are you going to wait to take profits on that because you don't always have to and if they hit it fast right so if you if you bought here and you waited two days to get paid you made 300 pips but you could just as easily come in here in a 100 pip window and sold that to make and that would be so i want to sell this vacuum i want to buy this one now when i buy this one unless i take my 50 pips like I typically do, I'm going to get crushed, but I definitely got, this is the same scenario. See this big window here? So you can start to see where you would lay the grid of limits. 
I understand that you know you got your sell stops and you're making money up until that. And when do you? How long do you stay in that trade? And when do you organize your exits? Still, the funniest thing I've ever heard is the uh, no nonsense guy who has the exit indicator. Well, that would be an entrance <laughs> indicator for everybody. Well, this is so stupid, right? It's called trading, right? You got to get in and out. Um, look at now, you know, daily I zoom out like this. Now you can see what I'm talking about. Here, I'm sure that this is, I'm sure this blew everybody's mind here. Using that same theory without a 300 pip stop. Now, so you buy here, <laughs> you can see the punishment that you're asking. I don't know if that's a new trader that's asking that, but look at some of this stuff. You got buy limits in here in a in a hundred pip window. Holy shit! You made how much here? And this is the mind blower. Who was buying here? And uh, that was a crusher. Like if you started buying here, you're just getting stopped out, stopped out, stopped out, stopped. That's why you got to buy, 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 because you will make it back and then some. Now it's happening very quickly. That's the problem. Now here is the melt up. I got, I got, I lost money on this, but I also made money on this. Um, I happen to be trading the pound when this happened because I looked at the pound and I go, oh, Jesus Christ. Now I'm making money here, I'm making money here. Now I'm getting stopped out, right? When it gets to here, psychologically, and I don't know what's going on weekly there, a lot of people are not going to be able to keep with that trade plan of selling, 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 even though, and this is why their trade plan isn't going to go to a four. You're not going to start trading with 300 pips. If you're not a 300 pip stop trader, you're not going to do it. But you sell here, sell, 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 no stop outs. Sell a 1K, sell a 10K, sell a 50K. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Now, another reason why the moving average systems are never going to trade like that is because this runaway run in this one month, that's you're never going to see that again in your life in that amount of pips on that instrument or maybe on another instrument. I don't think you're going to see that. Exact. So to correlate, this guy had this where he copied the channel. I just saw a video. Oh, God. I was going to comment on it. It was so much work. Um, This guy's talking about, you see this? We're gonna, this is our trade. I'm like, dude, what about all these trades? And yes, he was on a daily chart, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me! Your brain works." I mean, but how did you? How do you get around that, right? I mean, so once you trade with, um, once you trade with a trade plan, the world's a different place. I'm selling here on limits coming in, and I can tell you if I go to the four-hour chart, I can see my trade. But I'm using the four-hour chart in a different way than. I suppose the moving average guys because if I put a moving average on that four hour chart all it's doing is distorting it, it's 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 these are it's like watching CNN to get the facts you know this is not gonna it doesn't matter it's not gonna change my trade plan and it's just distracting as all get out but I know everybody wants these crutches they want to have their crutches you know so we go to the four hour I'll show you my uh, how I trade the four hour chart is like, okay, well, here's the four hour chart. Okay, what do we got here? Now I can reduce my risk. And now I can say, you know what? In four to eight hours, I can make X. If I put a buy limit here, I do not get filled. Actually, I don't get filled till here. This is a 25 pip window. And see how they just nicked the wick down there? Now I can make my first 25 pips. I can make my 50 to this floor. And if I held that for, as they come up into this sell limit and this sell limit. So I'm also going to sell into here. So it doesn't matter. Right now I got sell limits here, right? Sell, sell, sell. My trade plan for next week is to sell here and to start buying down here. I'm not going to, if I got a 15 minute script. So if I go to the, the time frame's telling me, um, kind of like, well, what can I expect for a fill here? If the market was open right now and we could drop, and of course we want these patterns to happen as fast as possible, we want to get rich quick, right? So if you're looking to make a lot of money in a in a 18 pip window or a 29 pip window, whatever that, whatever the market gives you that day, 
If you go to the one hour chart and you zoom out, can you see your trade on the one hour chart? So can you see? Yeah, I can see it. I can see it now. Now I can trade with a 13 pip stop, 18 pip stops, 10 pip stops, even 5 pip stops if the spread allows. And here I'm like, okay, you know what? How to trade. So I trade the one hour chart from that same idea of reversals contrarian limit entry set it and forget it i can see my trades here i got buy limits below these williams fractals we make our 25 pips we're not going to make 50 pips i got my sell limits here sell 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 on sell limits on the tops i'm going against the breakout traders the confirmation traders have buy stop stacking up here for a breakout to keep going up because maybe they got some 200 period moving average on there right <laughs> that kind of fucking ridiculousness but so my entry here so here's asia and we can see asia on the one hour chart very clearly what is the trade well you know how i love to buy the low of the day an easy trade to make 25 pips now if you run your sell limits in this little vacuum and you're trying to make 25 maybe 50 pips you know my trade buying this 50 pip window scalps built into it come back to the floor get out that most of the, my money's going to come from noise in the market Got buy limits here. We dot 50 pip window down, retrace by the end of the day. We're out just as you come in Asia. And then rinse and repeat. Now, the only thing that's going to change here, now this is a ripe, this is an amazing sell here. And I'm sure that on the five minute chart or 50 minute chart, our side, give me divergence up here. Yes, I'm sure inside that. But what if I just said, you know what? I'm going to sell limits here, sell, 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 I'll sell more here, more, 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 Martingale into it, cash out to here, and that's it. I don't have to ride even down into this. And the typical moving average system would, you know, let's just throw a moving average up there, I'll just for 20 EMA, right, that's the magic one. Um, it doesn't matter which one you use. You're just going to get more trades in the USC. How sloppy it is, but it's not moving average. Um, trend. Huh. So it's over there. So. Oh, the moving average. So you use the trend for. So I'm going to go with um, 20. And it has to be exponential or it's just not um, proper, right? <laughs> According to these people. All right, there you go. So look at it. It's telling me all these great entries. Now, if you babysat this, yes. If you babysat the 20 EMA, this is another reason why a lot of people aren't going to make money because they're sleeping. They're, you know, this is the middle of the night. If you sold every rally above the, and this is telling you to sell, right? Sell, 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 eh, sell, but you got clobbered. Sell, so you got club. Moving average starts to go long. Uh oh, we got a problem. Here's a sell. Sell, sell. I should sell my 20 EMA trading course. Sell. Now, this one, um, I guess you could say, oh, we should start thinking about buying. No, not yet. Okay, here's so If you're getting a strict rule, is you have to have a curved. You have to have a slanted down, and you only sell. Um, above that line. The fractal doesn't show up. Don't forget, this doesn't show up until the market's down here. These are all hindsight uh, fractals. Like this, this fractal just formed here. So now what do you do? Well, you're waiting for it to come back to this, right? To buy here, but I'm not waiting for that. I just have my buy limits in like this. This is a great momentum sell. You got moving average, you know, but I'm going to, you're going to sell maybe one ticket there or five, ten, I don't know. <clears throat> you could pull the trick. You have write a script that actually sells a cluster with different targets and different stops. Pull the trigger on 20K singles, each with a different stop and different target. You can write a script like that. So at them all in at one price, exit at different prices. 
And that's that's a great script. You don't have to trade the market. Especially if you know you're going to pull the trigger multiple times. And you're just like, I don't give a fuck. You know, it's just good. Now, if you buy, if you start to uh, buy one at the market and then trail limits half a pip apart that lasts for an hour and pick up a 20K on a, on a mini, mini, mini wick spike, that's different. Same thing here. If you can imagine that kind of technique during this situation, and maybe you're going to go to far chart and reduce your trading frequency, but his high frequency trading is sell, 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 you know. It's, but I got my sell limits in this pocket. I'm going to put more limits in here, and I don't have to wait. I'm like, you know what? I'm not relying on this moving average. I just know that I want to sell here, and I'll make my 25 pips. Now, yeah, and I want to put, I want to buy here. So all of the trades that you missed out because you're nothing but a seller, why why would you discriminate? I'm going to buy this and sell that. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy this to make that. I'm going to buy this to make that. Whereas you're only going to sell when you get the stars aligning here. And you're going to miss this 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 one. You're like, eh, moving average is it's whipsaw. I don't want to. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, and they're ruining. The market's ruining my uh, indicators. Oof, I hate that, you know. Uh, whereas I just see this now. I never saw that before. I did not see that until I'm like, wait a minute. Why don't I just buy here? Uh, fuck the trend. Why don't I just buy here and then make this to here and sell that? And I can just buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. Well, they say that's how you make money, buy low, sell high. Well, why don't I just range trade this? Even though you're telling me, oh, I only take, we're only looking for sales here, Johnny. Okay, well, you just missed out on how many pips coming back? How many pips coming back? How many? How many? How many? Well, it's overall, it's going down. Okay, but if I if I if I martingale into these things, I'm making more money than you. I'm making more money because I'm trading more. I got more trades that don't rely on optimizing or back testing. I don't need to back test this. I've seen it before. Don't have to back test uh, my vacuum auction stuff. This is right there. The back testing is just. It's moronic. It reminds me of central planning. Well, what we're going to do here, see, is that uh, we're going to give everybody a shiny electric car. Got to be shiny because their self-esteem will suffer. So, you know, this whole thing is just, I see how it's interwoven. I was a little naive. I thought that things were compartmentalized, but they're not. The same goobers that are wearing the masks are the same goobers that are, no, no offense to you moving average traders out there. But it's the same kind of like, and I understand that if you wore five masks and you duct tape duct taped your anus, that you wouldn't get raped. But I, I get, I get, I got gotcha. you. But we got to have some risk in life. And yeah, yeah, I understand. I don't want to get stopped out. I don't want to. Actually, I don't get like I said, I'm offended. I'm, I'm uh, really uh, I have a thin skin when it comes to them stopping me out of trades because, dude, obviously these are bullshit moves. And I, were, I really wish I would have shorted the Bitcoin when I kept saying, you got to be fucking kidding. It's 60 grand. Anybody that's buying up here is out of their fucking mind. But I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a Bitcoin account to, to short it, you know. Now, what have I gone long? Would I be building a slightly long position here? I'm not, you know what? Eight hours. I'm in for eight hours. I'm out. Look at the Bitcoins. Cryptocurrency. <laughs> so cute. Now, that's a great trade here. I marked it off. That's a great scalp. Am I buying Bitcoin here for the long run? No, because I think it's fucking doomed. I think it's coming into those rectangles. It's going to take so long. Look at this beautiful top. You also saw this beautiful top in the yen. Uh, look at this. RSI, I'm, I guarantee you RSI gives you a triple divergence there. Boom, 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 slam. So this is where I got, uh, I thought, well, I get more little baby retrace here. No, they went down lower, but I bought it. Okay, so I bought a ton right here. I had pendings and I made it back and then some because, well, that's, you know, I'm like, okay, really? So I thought, you fuckers come into this price and then here I just a giant uh, 300K down here. Okay, I'm out.
<laughs> it's just like I just made back whatever I lost kind of dicking around with small positions here and I had buy limits in here. So I got in here and I'm like, really? We're gonna go okay. So I thought, well, no, that no, it's going lower. It's unbelievable, you know. You can't believe it when it's like here, when it came up here, you're like, holy shit, really? Yeah. That's um the place to sell. I was just watching some novice guy selling a course and he's like watching the market move and he's like, This is incredible. It always is. I mean, it's always mind boggling that they push the price below here. And then, well, it's like it never existed. It comes ripping back. So these are all the ways that I'm making money from not having to worry about moving averages. I got the one period there, but uh, just buy, 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 buy more down here. And I'm out of about half of the trade by here. And if I do get some follow through, a uh, attempt to engulf. Don't always get it, you know. Um, I think this is a uh, how is this uh, five pip window? Yeah. Yeah, this is five pip window here. But you can trade very heavy here. And here you can run five pip stops. Dollar yen, yes, you could do it. Dollar yen on the four hour, you can trade with five pip stops. And if you're watching the tick chart and all that, I'm probably going to buy at the market there. You know, uh, this is a kind of easy uh, currency to trade. And easy, but nothing's easy. But uh, I can get my brain around like a five pip stop because I'm thinking, yeah, I'd be 50 bucks on a standard lot. Of course, I'm not trading standard lots. I'm trading 1Ks. As you can see, made them fucking money. There you go. And that's on a demo. And I think I got tendonitis from doing it. But hey, you know, it's real work. Trading's work. There's no way around it. And um, let's go to the five minute Bitcoin just as we close out the, uh, the rant here. Oh, yeah. Um, what the fuck? Where is my... Okay, this is the Bitcoin. Let's go to the small time frames. That's where all the fun is, you know. Because that's what Blue Oyster called some mom, and that's where the fun is. Um, the five-minute chart. Uh, okay. Boom. Five minutes. Click, click, boom. Now you can see the spread there. It makes it almost unthinkable. So let's go to the 15. This is the ICT time frame. I think he patented this time frame. Now, using my theory, and I could write a script for the Bitcoin that buys a 10K. As we drop in, and I would have to write it to, uh, I don't have a grid on this thing, but I say the spread's going to be my grid. Roughly, what I'm going to do there is I got buy limits, buy limits, buy limits, and I'm going to buy more, 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 more scalp out. But am I going to buy this? I probably would on the 15. So if the market was here, I could put buy limits in here and cash out. If I do not cash out of that, then we've got this situation. New low of the day coming into the end of the day. That's my kind of buy. We make the money to the floor here for that. And we do get the engulf. See, we come up here and we can have sell limits up here so we can trade both sides. Right now I got buy limits pending. And when it comes down, so I'm going to buy a little bit, a little bit more. It kind of reminds me of accumulation. Uh, I'm actually going to accumulate. There's so many trades here on the Bitcoin. If the spread was tighter, I could even see just on the weekend being like, okay, well, this is um, this is Friday. And um, we could have bought this thing into the close of Friday. It'd be long into the weekend, and on Saturday we're cashing out. This 15-minute world of Bitcoin is so tradable, I wish the spread was tighter, that, you know, this isn't bad, right? And not, not a lot of leverage, I don't think, here, but you know, typically you give you a lot of leverage in the, in the cryptos. Here, here's a bottom become a top, right? And bottom becomes a top. Did you, but did you babysit that and pull the trigger at 1% of your account and sell there? Um, yeah, no, that's a great trade, isn't it? Or did you just place the lazy, and I sometimes very lazy, put buy limit grid down here, and some of these are winners, but always put, always buy more the deeper it goes. So it may seem like a wimpy trade here, but it's okay because you could either scalp out of there or let that plunge in. 
Well, if I, so if you let the market come to you into that in that manner, but the art of it is, the key is, how do you layer these things? It's all about the layering. If you buy a little bit here, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and inside of some of these tickets, they're actually going to cash out. The tar targets are built in. The bad ratios are built in for the scalps. The big, um, maybe a kind of a wide stop. So I have, a, say I have um, 250K, and I could lay 250K in about, oh, 10, 20 minutes in the morning. And let's see, all the expirations for these are like 12 hours. So I don't have to come back this, to this thing for 12 hours to see what happened. And if I let this play out, if I let this play out, maybe I should this girl started in Bitcoin because then she could trade on the weekends. And, you know, this is the thing. It's a trader's market most of the time. The time in Bitcoin in the same situation would be for the guy that comes into... Um, the market, when it's screaming up or down and they stand in front of it at the market or with limits or even go with the flow, the dangers of the, and everything has its uh, side effects, except the uh, vaccine, of course. But uh, holy shit, watch the government do anything, you know, watch big business do anything. Think of all the woke institutional trading that is so fucking retarded and loses so much money okay how about these hedge funds that are that are getting killed shorting uh loser companies i mean they're on top of the world now you're losing money wait, i thought you guys are the wait a minute huh institutions are morons that's why ict just pisses me off oh, I, i've been in these institutions that's how they make money you mean that's how they lose money so you're going to use their fucking techniques? I mean, this is fucking hilarious. I haven't seen one of his things in a while, but you can't get over the... Maybe my personality is not much better, but you can't get over people say, are you ICT? No, from the same side of the country. I guess <laughs> if you're out here, you're just a certain way, but... Let me zoom in here. I can't, I can't see the forest for the trees there. I kind of zoom out. I know people run their charts like this. Like, see that trade? But this, okay, this sell-off here in the Bitcoins. I think all the Bitcoins on purpose. And I just make fun of it. This is, this is ridiculous. Now, if you were to be able to trade during these phases, and I'm going to say 80% of this thing is going to be bing, 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 like this nonsense. Very few times you're going to ever see a move like this in Bitcoin or anything, really. So, big scream up. You get this. This is the uh, kind of the, the line of scrimmage now. Can the Bitcoin ever get above that? Boy, it's going to take a lot of dicking around to blow through, or a lot of dicking around to blow through. The dicking around is where I would say, say, if you, it's a grind, it's a hustle, but you're going to sit there, you're going to make your 10, your 20, you make your 100, your $300 a day, your $500 or your $1,000 a day. And that one guy was asking me about, uh, well, can I make a, a, a million dollars a day? Okay, you, you can't, the reason why you couldn't is, uh, say, just go to this demo. Let's close on this demo here. Let's just take a look at uh, this account here. If you were to say that, you would not be able to You'd have to start going to 2Ks on the scripts. If you go to 2K on the scripts, oh, why can't I get back to the, uh, well, it's nice fast internet. Um, it, so you, the way the, the way the account's structured right now, no, because if you do go and you say, well, I'm going to make a million dollars a day, that means you're going to lose 250 grand on a, on a, on a given day. If you're making a million dollars a day, don't be surprised if you lose $150,000 in one day. Now, if you told somebody I lost one hundred fifty, dollars I typically make about $75,000, $700,000 a day. So on a good day, we make a million dollars, you know, on a good day. Now, the markets doesn't always present these zooming moves. And if you really have dialed in, and I used to back test going way back i swear to god back tested in 1988 uh back testing and before the 286 computer because we had the 
the trading models, and you would get these results. And I'd get, oh, I thought, oh my god, like I, I dude, I'm, 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 I'm uh, three grand into a two twenty five hundred dollars into a two eighty six computer with a math code processor. I think I added, um, and I've got uh, five and a quarter floppies that cost eighteen hundred dollars per floppy written by P Pardo Corporation. I don't know if they're still around. And I have talked to the guys that ran it. They're brothers. And this thing will look at the daily closing prices. You buy data for it too. Oh, this costs so much money, dude. You bought data, you ran it, you back tested it. I let this thing print all night. My wife almost like left me. She she wasn't gonna print all night and the printer had like overheated. I think I put a fan on it. That's right, it shut down. So I, I put a fan and I had a, a bought really cheap paper. And in the middle of the night, this thing literally spills out the the results are not saved to the hard drive to review it on some chart. It's just coming out of there without any chart. It has profitability numbers. And I'm seeing profits of like 500%. I'm like, this is fucking nice. This is, oh my God, honey, honey, we could just retire right now. Now, there, I mean, that was kind of the spark that really... I mean, I saw this on the page of, um, it was, I'll never forget, it was called um, uh, PC Computing. And it, the cover of the page was, can you make money with your computer in the market? And I thought, well, yeah, that's right. Now, they only had 286s back then, but I thought, yeah, there now we're talking. I thought, yes, that's the answer, because I ain't got time to rifle throw. I ain't got time for that. I'm a 911 <laughs> operator. I, I we, we, I'm gonna let this computer. I'll do my gig, and this computer's sitting there crunching. It's perfect. Now, uh, well, willing to spend, and I spent ten grand on I think the whole rig, and my Epson twenty-four pin printer had just on fire printing this stuff out. I thought, you know, this is it. And then I would never take a trade from that thing ever. And I thought, and not to mention. I hadn't optimized it yet. It's just not good enough to trade. And what is frustrating for me is to watch people worry about their algorithm when they just got to worry about how are they going to feel when they're $500 in a $500 drawdown in a swing trade that they know is probably worth a thousand if they can psychologically endure this uh, drawdown. And maybe they have a $10,000 account. They're down 500 bucks and they're like, I've never been down $500. This is fucking ridiculous. I need a new strategy. Okay. Even a new strategy um, that makes even more money is going to maybe have a bigger drawdown. There's the only cure for the um, psychological for the uh that's why people say trade with money you can you can afford to lose because it psychologically lets you off the hook oh it's okay if i lose this money it's never okay to lose money i'm sorry your brain just never it, it's okay to run over a couple people it's okay to hit a couple cars on the way to work i didn't hit every car um no, it's not acceptable. For most people, it's unacceptable, and that's the rigidity that people come to the market with. I don't think it's really... I think it's better to have a psychological um, uh, kind of uh, training. That's why they say, they say trading is 90% psychological because you can even blow up a good trading robot. Now, there's... If, say, I built that back in the day, I'd built this, uh, optimized it, good enough, you know, I'm trading corn or soybeans is what I trade back then because it's the cheapest thing to trade. Okay, let's trade that. Let's use this fucking algo. God, thank God, uh, Don, think par Pardo, Don Pardo, I can't remember his name. Gee, thanks for that fucking uh, five and a quarter floppy, dude, that cost 1800 bucks because I'm fucking a millionaire right now. <laughs> thank you. Now, I don't think anybody could prepare you for... Not to mention, in the commodities markets, the margin requirements fluctuate. They do not in Forex. It's a static 
margin requirement. In commodities, it'd be like, okay, we just increased the... You can't... Nobody can trade that shit. The only people who can trade that is the fucking big house and the commercials. Who's got the kind of fucking margin requirement? Like, so a guy that's got a $20,000 account, he cannot trade any of the shit. And, and that's why, you know, if you've got $100,000 to trade commodities, you're already rich. Dude, you're already rich. But here... Holy fuck. You could put $500 in an account and trade Bitcoin every fucking day of your life. And if you know how to fucking execute, if you know how to get in and out of the market, that's the thing. Nobody's talking about, well, how do I get in that trade, by the way? I like, um, I love your analysis. I like where you're going with that. But how do I put this trade on again? I just wake up in the morning and go, we're an uptrend buy? No. You have to get out your Fibonacci tool. You put in wait for a 618 pullback. Okay. I attach that to what price time frame? A four hour chart. Okay, I have my 618 buy limit right on. It's not six, it's 618. I got that on. They missed my entry by one pip. Huh. Now, at that point, that should be the first turning point. Of course, it's not typically because people are thinking, well, maybe I should go with the uh, ICT pullback, which is a little more shallow. So don't miss out on that trade because the fear of missing out is a real thing because I have a fear of missing out every fucking day. Um, not a fear. I just have a constant miss. I'm always missing out. It's not a fear of missing out. It's a known missing out. What would you call it? <laughs> What's unfear? Uh, it, I just have a certainty of missing <laughs> a certainty that I can't take every trade that's out there. And like when you got a new toy, you know, hey, let's just test it on this. So the 618, uh, okay, I got my ticket in there. Like the strat, what's the strategy called? So I, I, I just crushed. I mean, I've met so many people online that are saying this one guy felt so bad. He just said, I'm just going to go trade stocks. He goes, I can't take it. He spent two grand. Some guy came to his house, babysat him through this bullshit with the moving averages. When you see this, when you see an engulfing pattern after a 618 with the with the moving averages and all that shit lined up, and you got, oh, I got, I'm going to give this trade a, a rate this trade on a trade like a judge, see? And uh, I'm going to give that a five. On a scale of one to five, I'll give that a five. Well, that one's a three trade. I'm not, not going to risk too much money on that because the signal's kind of weak. Turns out that was the best trade. Gee, how did that work out? Maybe because your fucking bullshit algorithms are all bullshit. Maybe the market's just going up and down. Did you ever think of that? So I did think of that. <laughs> I did think of that. I thought, well, how can I capture this, all this no bullshit noise? So when Sunday market opens, I lay my tracks. I lay my first starter t tickets of the week. And I'm not trading this thing every day. Actually, this is 95 days of trading here, but... I trade more than this with my real money. Now, if I, if I were to trade um, in concert, put that trade on there, and, uh, oof, I, I don't know, you know. Now, if you, this is why the no-nonsense thing exists. Because these people have filtered it to the point where they're barely trading the market. I mean, if they pick this up or that, I should go to the, the Discord channel. I'm kind of curious to see. It's so fun to read the comments. You just read the comments. Just go to any popular Forex video and read the comments. And people are like, oh, you're such a nice guy. Well, fuck, who cares? Or they, you really showed that. You really showed the candlestick pattern. I understand it now. Do you really? I mean, do you have a track? I could actually go through the candlestick. I was going to do a candlestick. I was going to play. I'm tired. <laughs> but I was going to maybe later on, uh, um, I get a nap. You know, I'm 63. But uh, I got I to gotta have to take a Biden nap. But, you know, the, I got some coffee. I'll come back. After <laughs> In candlesticks, I was thinking about how to trade candlesticks. Yeah, you know, on the dailies, I was going to do the robot playback, the candlesticks on the daily. Go, what's the trade? Let's lay some. Let's lay some pennings in there. Let's pick up some tickets because I'm not too, I guess I'm uh, not uh, sophisticated enough to pick a one uh, ticket entry. I'm not, 
optimized enough to get one precise 618 entry. So I'm just saying, let's just be uh, kind of piggish about it. Why are we so formal? Why can't we just throw a rack of tickets out there and go, let's see what happens? Oh, is that just, it's just, that's silly. Oh, that really? Uh, some guy did make a comment. Well, I'm just throwing out stuff there and hope it hits. Yeah. But a little bit more precise than that. Let's hope. Um, I am actually using these slots in price, and I'm picking a, a window of risk. So if it's a 20 pip, if I'm on the pound, I know I'm going to have to risk a 50 pip window. If And if I'm on that the four-hour chart. So every chart, as you go to the, if you're on the weeklies, it was just so funny because this top-down analysis, you're on the weekly, okay, but for why? You could just go on the four-hour chart and zoom out and see all the nooks and crannies, all the vacuums. You, you really have to, the weekly charts? And then you're going to mark off zones that are five, five fucking hundred pips away? Why? What does it have to do with you? It's like climate change, morons. Dude, the fact that the temperatures change... You heard of winter and summer? You gonna what are you gonna reimagine temperature swings now? Hey, it's cold at night. We gotta stop that. Can somebody change the thermometer on the world? Are you fucking kidding me? Nature counts on chaos. The market thrives on these fucking spikes. That's how we're making money. Well, I wish they keep stop manipulating the market. Why? So you can just not make any money? Yeah, keep every price is the same. And this inflation, I'm going to tell you, I'm not, I know there's reality. The inflation thing, it's not real, dude. On certain commodities, it's always, dude, inflation's always been here. On certain, it's very, I went to the store the other day, I go, this is still the same price. There's more shit that's still the same price. Yeah, some shit spikes. But everything should cost a million dollars based on how much money they printed. So obviously that nobody gives a fuck. It is whatever the market will bear, dude. The market is in people's minds. When they go to the store, if they won't buy it, they're gonna drop the price. It'll go You ever heard of a sale? What's that anti inflationary? And if you go back go back five years ago, four years ago, three years ago, you know what they were you know what the government was saying? We need inflation. We need to have inflation. Well they got it. Uh, on certain topics, not everywhere. Uh, go look at lumber. So totally destroyed now. It's, these are order imbalances, dude. These are order imbalances. For the most part, 80% of the market is just hemming and hawing, ranging, static nonsense. Anyways. I want to do a playback of the dailies or, or the four-hour chart later with a robot. And I mean, just the robot's just going to be playing the market back so I can just call out those trades. People say, what do, you, what do you do there? And if I put up the pound, I'm going to put up the 50-pip grid. Um, because on the four-hour chart, the 50-pip grid with 100-pip stops to make 200 pips or 150, those are just different numbers. And I think you need three times the amount of money to trade the pound, in my opinion, you're going to triple your stop widths. And uh, euro versus yen, probably saying when you go to that currency, so when you see the guys with the, the no nonsense with the 14 period ATRs, that number is telling you whether that you've got to reduce your size if you're used to trading a 10K on the, on the euro. Now you got to trade a fucking 3K on the pound. For that pip window, um, to base your percentage of risk because the setup is a A triple A setup. <laughs> really? On your you so you wrote the holy grail in your basement. Another thing I just heard, which just cracks me up, um it's off topic, but not in a way in a way. That's all off topic for me, but you know, this I saw this this British um Karen, I guess you call him. This bitch on TV berating this other girl that refused to get the vaccine and going, oh, you know, um, you know, you, and they're like fucking 40 feet from each other, you know, and uh, the cameraman's trying to, and they got uh, 
this bitch just kept going on about. And so the girl says, "Well, you know, oh, are you a, are you a uh, are you a doctor now? So you mean to tell me I can't fucking have a brain? Oh, so you're a finance guy now? Yeah, for my finances. You worry about your finances. Yeah, I'm, yeah, that's right. I'm a fucking guru. I'm a I'm a finance." Oh, do you have a broker's license? You shouldn't be trading. Did you take a class in that? Yeah, I took my own class. It's called, I'm getting killed in the market. What's going on here? Or I'm winning. How did I make money? <laughs> the idea that you need to be a fucking a doctor to say, yeah, I don't know, I, that, that glowing radiation that that guy just has a tumor. You just took the vaccine and you just got a heart attack. Hmm. Maybe I'll pass on that. What are you, a doctor now? Mm, I don't know. I guess I'm just observant. Oh, that's... You're not allowed to have a, a observation. You're observing? What are you, a spy? So the whole world's become so fucking overwoke. But I guess Forks is, Forks analysis is, has been this... The word technical analysis, even the word analysis... It's a double whammy of sophisticated bullshit. Tactical analysis. Well, what did I just do? I just went through the chart and said, if the market drops 20 pips an hour, I'm a buyer. Huh? Where's your technical analysis? Don't need it. Don't want it. In fact, I've already included if that ticket lasts for four hours, I'm saying that market has to drop 20 pips in four hours. So I can see that's a momentum trade. Uh, high momentum. So it's dropping very quickly. Uh, high probability of filling that ticket. Well, I don't know if four hours is quick to you, but maybe it's a one hour ticket. That's quick, right? So one hour is 40 pip deep and all the way down. If I lay a whole rack, 20K over a 20 pip window for two hours in Asia, probably won't fill. US market opens, might fill and blow it out. Now the trick is, putting um, two hour orders 40 pips deep it's as simple as that you just have to adjust to what's going on if a hurricane's coming you've boarded up your house but we know a hurricane's coming why are people boarding their houses because why if you know the thing if you know it takes you three days to board your house and you know the hurricane's offshore and then you start boarding it now right that's you're timing the you're timing the market you're timing nature in that sense you're not going to put an order a thousand pips deep even though you know in six months that's a great fucking place to get in the market and you're certainly not going to do that if you're waiting for a price action setup you're waiting for the market to do something and for the way the most of the uh, courses that people sell is about waiting for that shit to happen and then getting in instead of getting in in front of what is probably going to happen and that is the idea that you're going to you wait for the nfp report to come out okay now we're going to take our position in the market well you could have taken that position you waiting the market doesn't know you exist so it's not like and maybe you don't like volatility because it's too much volatility. You're waiting for that Goldilocks setup. And if you're going to trade a breakout strategy and you wait for the apex of a triangle, yes, you can make a living doing those trades, right? I'm not going to do that trade because there's not enough of the, there's not enough triangles. And I can see that triangle, but I'm already in the trade. So I'm already in a position and looking for that big move. So, the market goes sideways to load the wagon. And the more it's not going somewhere, the more it's going to really go somewhere. That's why you get the flag triangle pennant consolidations. I never understood people that were talking about this. Well, that's a, a widening funnel. So what? Well, it's kind of already just, it means it's getting more and more volatile. But I, if I see that, I'm like, okay, let's let's do let's trade the wicks. So when the news comes out, if I'm not in the trade uh, during the news, I actually sometimes I'll 
I'll be like, okay, I can I can withstand the volatility. The final destination I think is here, which it usually is that, but then it comes back, right? So it clears everything out. So that one pulse and then the the counter move. If I trade the move and the counter move, if I see the mark, I'm not in the market. I have the ability now to just lay drag and drop scripts out in front and go, okay, there, 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 there. And I suppose this is the argument of uh, the guy that fixes the thing and says, well, you just tapped it here. Yeah, but I knew where to tap it, right? That's why it cost you 500 bucks because I knew, I know where to put the tickets. That's the, the guru part. Is that, I'm like, yeah, there's a slot here. I can see it. And when I see it fill, and I'm like, oh, that looks like, okay, let's just scalp out. Even though I got targets in there that are 50 pips, 40 pips, I'm like, they're combined in there with the scalps. I'm like, those are never going to fill. That is, that is, I'm not, me, you could probably let that go. Let the scalps happen. Hold the wide stops, like I'm holding on this yen over the weekend. I'm long the dollar yen. And I'm like, okay, well, I got a, I got a 30 pip stop on there. They're not taking me out of that. I'll go underwater. I'll buy more. And this is the thing. I'm willing to buy more on another one. So what I've been doing lately is I'm long, but I'm going to get longer. And I'm scalping around my position because I realize that the, the final move isn't going to come until U.S. markets open. So trading in Asia the only kind of drama we're going to see is about three or four in the morning when Europe opens. Okay, we get a big move. And then we can see that thing reverse when U.S. markets open or it continues. But just up until three o'clock in the morning, it's pretty like, okay, we can make our 10, 20 pips if you're that kind of guy. There's people that trade that. You just have to find that comfort zone. Now, in U.S. markets, when you, if you're working nine to five at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're looking at Asia, you're looking at small pips. You could trade a little bit bigger. Spreads aren't the greatest until about six or seven. And for seven to three o'clock in the morning, that's totally tradable. But when you, but when London opens, if you're running tight stops, you got to use you step back or you bring it your wide, your wide stops. So for me, it's all about stops and targets. And uh, what can, what can you what can you sustain? Because some of these moves look like great moves, but they would have kicked you out with your 25 pip stop or your 12 pip stop. They would have kicked you out. You'd never seen that. You'd never seen that final, what you perceive to be the final target. And so that's, I think that's the big, the big, uh, the big obstacle in, in making money. And then people talk about consistently making money. Well, what do you call that? I mean, you're gonna you're going to consistently make more money, but you're gonna still gonna lose it. You're still gonna get stopped out of stuff. So you just need to be psychologically prepared for, I guess, rehearsing or also envisioning. Well, am I okay being? Um, am I okay losing a hundred dollars in the next three hours or the next hour? The next can I can I handle being? Um, Losing a hundred and being like, um, well, that's what I'm done. Now, if you're just starting out, you know, ah, that's I'm done for the day. I'm totally, and it, it can really be tough because you're like, God damn, I put so much work into this. I took five courses. I got 20 grand. I've met people that are down fucking a hundred grand on their account. They spent like fucking 20 grand on courses. Yeah. And if you're making uh 300 grand a year, that's probably not a lot of money to you. You're like, yeah, I'm kind of get beat up here. Everybody's at a different level of what uh, they consider to be pain. And uh, th those things are definitely going to affect your trading. You know, they're going to um, make it so that uh, it's a lot of... But if you don't mind this, um, I guess it's a background tension, you're in a trade... But you just know how it is. You just get used to that feeling. Okay, I'm in this trade, and you're up. And when you're up, when I'm up on a trade, th that's that's a different problem too. Because now it's like, maybe I should just get out of this thing. I'm already up really big. 
so when I do get out of these really big trades where I'm up, I'm going, you know, it could keep going up. I mean, I'd actually talk to myself in my head out loud. Typically, I say, you know, it's probably going to, but you know what? I know that I don't want to sit in it for fucking 12 hours for one more price pulse when it could just as easily retrace from there. And if I get out here at where I said I would get out, and I know that this is where the sellers come in. I'm okay. You have to be okay with that. So it can be just as painful, if not more painful, to get out of a trade where you go, okay, we got that first target in. And I just made a lot of money, and I just don't want to have to, well, I don't want to move my stops. So that's why I'm getting out. Now, if I trail my stops and did the, oh, I'm going to move all my stops up, on 350 single tickets uh, uh i will move my targets if the market's roaring i'm like oh god they're gonna fucking take me out of these profits i'll move those up i will actually move 150 tickets manually up to make myself a thousand bucks or something i'll do that um because it's like oh you know i don't want to i also don't want to let it cash out and buy more along the way because I don't want to repay the commissions on the spread. There's all sorts of little obstacles that some people find to be silly. They say, well, we're really worried about the, okay. But you gotcha. You're, on, you're drinking Diet Coke and you weigh 350 pounds and you want a donut with your Diet Coke, gotcha. So there are these things that don't make sense that people do, but you have to work around that. And uh, you have to accept the fact that you have those things that don't make sense. And the scripts have been my way to work around it. I know I want to buy for plunges. How can I buy that and absorb the sell-off? And think, you know, if they do take that out, I'm down uh, 500 bucks. Okay, you're down 500 bucks on the day because you bought that plunge. It's all right. I'm up a thousand the next day. Next day I'm up five hundred. Then I'm up a thousand. Then I'm up two thousand. But when I'm down five hundred, I'm definitely not like, oh, that's just great, you know. Oh, that's just great. Um, nobody's going to go golfing and go, oh, just lost a ball in the woods. That's beautiful, nice. But that's, I mean, the best golf in the world is going to well, some guy just recently. I don't know. Camera's in bad. He happened to him. Oh, you got COVID, pull you off the course. Really? Okay. What? COVID? Yeah, well, that shit, it's killing everybody. Holy shit, really? Wow. Yeah, don't lick your golf ball. Got COVID on it, see? See how that works? Which COVID? Uh, COVID 21 and a half. <laughs> it's like new COVID. Delta COVID. Delta. Delta Force COVID? Yeah. What is bad shit, dude? Blew up my trading account. I was trading with COVID. Yeah. Blew up my trading account. No, it's just not. The market's really not the um, place for these. Oh, God. I, I got to go watch. Uh, you know, can a robot trade these markets gosh i don't know how honestly not you know i don't think a robot could make um i could out trade a robot i'm just saying without hardly even trying <laughs> a robot anyways that's that i gotta give me a coffee watch the i can watch the war room pandemic my favorite uh i just like to watch the government fuck shit up even the worst retail traders smarter than the government even even the worst the worst citizen even the 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 dumbest citizen is smarter than the market <laughs> citizen sorry human them the are you worried about with the with the, your pronoun man you got a pro fucking problem you got you're so wealthy you worry about your pronoun i'm the chief market analyst here thank you very much <laughs> There was another one, but I kicked him out. I'm an analyst, see? I analyze stuff. Don't trade it. Just analyze it. This is the weekend update. Forex.
Yeah, well, looking forward to it tomorrow night. Market's open, and uh, I would check the news there on the 17th of June to see what they were saying about the, uh, well, the dollar's on a tear until it gave back <laughs> dollar. Oh, the dollar's going to, to do. And there's another one that kills me is the dollar is the, these guys that sell gold, they go, you know, dollar is not going to be the reserve currency. Dude, I don't give a fuck if it's a reserve currency. I'm going to go to the store. I'm using dollars to, it's like Bitcoin. I'm using it as a, as a tool to buy shit. You know, holding on to gold and dollars is, what, unless you buy something with it, what the fuck? It's just money in the bank, right? Maybe for, for an emergency, right? For an emergency. But trust me, if you go to sell your gold, if you think that when you get to the market, your gold's you're going to be worth 500 bucks an ounce. If there is a fucking, if the wheels come off and people say, I'm going to go sell my gold, you really think you're going to get fucking 1700 for it? You, you get 800 bucks. Dude, you go to a pawn shop right now with gold. You know what they're going to pay you? about fourteen hundred? Oh, it's seventeen hundred dollars spot. No, not here, buddy. <laughs> I got assay fees. That ain't pure gold. That's a jewelry. Um, even if it's pure gold, right? So okay, commissions. All right, I'm gonna go take a nap. I go pull a Biden.